Hi guys, Brendan from TAP. So I just want to do a short video today talking about um, connection methods in circuits. So we do a lot of talk about diagnosing things, but I want to talk about some of the tooling that we use. And it's, um, it's not particularly fancy stuff. This is, I've grabbed out a few of my day-to-day my -day things that, that I use commonly. A lot of it is some of the cheapest stuff in the drawer, but it's kind of like your, your spanners and sockets in mechanical work that you're grabbing out and using all of the time to, to get into these circuits and diagnose them first safely and also not causing any damage. You know, the first, first um, motto that we have to have is to do no harm when we're doing the testing. So um, as far as my go-to things, um, back probes are, are a necessary thing that you're gonna come across needing eventually. I've got uh, many styles of them. So it's, it's one of the preferred methods of, of entering a network. Um, doesn't do too much uh, disturbance, so you always want to be mindful, you know, if I'm pulling that connector apart, putting it back, if I, if I just fix the problem. I mean, sometimes just the simple um, back probing into something can fix it. it. It has happened if you've got a, t a terminal that's a bit loose or something, but, you know, we need to connect into the circuit somehow. So, uh, lately I've been quite liking these ones that have got a bit of a, a flex to them, so I got these from AES Wave. Um, so, not a replaceable tip like they, they have on some that I've got. Um, which can come in handy, but they're quite rigid, these replaceable tip ones that you get from AES Wave. So um, there's the case of it there. And uh, you can take a screw out and you can replace the tips in these because they're a bit brittle, but I find eventually the, the hard plastic um, starts to, to break away. These have more of a silicon type feel to them and they've been doing quite well. Um, and I believe these again were AES Wave, but these have been really good. So a very... Um, small head really which and, and very bendy obviously so it can get you in some really tight places and then obviously you're putting your multimeter or scope lead onto the end of that um, so these just come in a little kit of a few of them and definitely worth the money um, I've, I've gotten to a lot of tight spots with those um, something else that I've been using that's you know probably the cheapest out of them all is hypodermic needles so um, I suppose I'm pretty lucky. My wife's a, a midwife, so I, I'm always bugging her to get me some of, the, of these. But extremely small profile, like extremely fine um, tip on them, and they're, they're quite flexible. So you'll find a lot of other back probes um, can snap and, and they can be quite thick to get into some connectors. These are super small, super flexible, and I usually will use them with a, just a little sort of hook probe. And so hooking onto that, you've got yourself a nice solid connection you know, it doesn't take up too much room and they're you know, almost disposable basically. So those work quite well as well. Um, so those are your, your main back probes. Everyone's gonna have all kinds of ones. People use um, you know, stationary T-pins, things like that. The main thing is just making sure they're gonna be insulated from anything that you that it could come in contact with that's gonna short out. So you know, these ones that have got the nice banana connectors on the back do make life a lot easier. Um, next in the list, I've, I've brought out the amp clamps. So, um, got a 20 to 60 amp range low amp clamp and this one goes up to 600 amps. These are, are sort of your creme de la creme as, as far as um, circuit access because you, you're not disturbing anything. So to be able to just clamp around a wire and um, tell a lot about the circuit, it's, it's obviously going to be the, the best method but I think a lot of people sort of know about amp clamps so we won't go into them too much. We just want to keep moving through what we've got. Um, obviously a lot of alligator clips, so your regular alligators, your dolphin clips, um, sometimes these ones are good for getting onto larger things and then these tiny little guys come in handy sometimes. Uh, we've got piercing probes, so they're a necessary evil. Um, ideally you don't want to pierce the circuit if possible, um, but sometimes it's just the way it is and it's all, everything's going to be a trade-off of, of getting the job done. Um, effectively but causing as least damage as you can. So there's quite a few on the market. Um, these ones work quite well. Again, you're probably getting a bit of a trend. Um, I believe I got these from aeswave.com, which is an American site. Um, so I'll pull down, they've got a, a little nail in it if you like, quite fine. And then we can screw this in just softly. So that's the key with those. You know, We're not trying to force it through and, and poke the, the thing out the other side of the wire. We're just trying to get some access into the circuit and they, they give you quite a bit of feel. Um, this one here that's um, called Phil's 10 inch piercing probe, uh, it, it comes out if you say it's up the top of a fuel tank and you know, to access that wire you may have to drop the fuel tank or that's where something like this comes in. So um, it's just a long probe that you, you pull it down, there's a bed of nails in there, I mean it's quite, quite destructive for what it is but you sort of, that, that's the, the evil of, of what you're in for this kind of thing and if you can get that up somewhere and get access to the circuit 
It's the kind of thing that sort of saves you four hours of work if you just wanted to prove something. Um, with all of these piercing probes, so you need to make sure that you're attempting to repair the circuit or you're only creating a problem. Corrosion's going to get in there over the years, so ideally if you can repair the, the circuit, um, I like to put a bit of liquid electrical tape, um, tape it up as well. You just want to insulate it from the weather mainly so that you're not causing corrosion um, down the line. Um, problem there, so this is my, I suppose you call it the, the various terminals type breakout kit. Just get you a picture, so DAT equipment I got this one from. There's quite a few um, different brands out there, but um, the main part of this is a lot of your, your female connectors. Um, so sure, we've got the, the spades and they're good for your, your um, drag test you may have heard. So putting these into a female connector and making sure that you've got good terminal tension there. But a lot of the time I'll use the female connectors in this, uh, particularly if I'm testing a component. So if I'm going to feed 12 volts to it, I, the only real safe way to be able to get there on those tiny pins, which are a lot of the time you know, inside a socket, is you, you'll put some females over the male part of the component and then be able to feed it power and ground safely without the possibility of shorting. Um, all kinds of other things that I've come across over the years that I like to keep in here, just general um, connectors so you can put leads together, male to female, you know, female, female, all that kind of thing. And I made up a little sort of, I call it a test rig if you like, so just a bit of a safer way if I do have a component that I want to test. So it's just an on-off switch um, going into Obviously I can put that onto battery negative and then it goes through a fuse um, and go onto battery positive. So basically just a simple circuit. If I want to test something like an EGR valve or an oil control solenoid or something, you've got your own little circuit ready to go basically just out of battery. Um, kits are going to have all kinds of different things in there, so just read whatever kit you've got. And yeah, there's all kinds of fancy little things. Uh, you've probably seen Jeff Smith using the, the relay tester. This is a Lyle one. Um, obviously you know, I'll, I'll let him speak for it. He's got a video showing the operation of it, but they just come in super handy if you want to get access to underneath that relay and be able to test that circuit. Absolutely indispensable. So they work quite well. Um, a couple of other things I've included here. So, you know, it's getting off track a little bit. We're still talking about circuit access. Uh, the Power Probe, um, lots of different variations of it, but uh, this one's the, the Power Probe 4, I believe. I think it is, yeah. Um, there may be one after this, the five, I think. But um, basically, it's it's a fairly simple device. Just hook it onto a, a battery, hook it onto the car, basically, and um, up is going to be applying power, and down is going to be applying a ground reference. So, a good tool in the right hands. Um, a terrible tool if you you're not thinking or you're sort of taking a bit of a guess. You will destroy stuff with this. Um, sure, it's got a circuit breaker in there, but it doesn't take. Uh, too long applying full voltage to the wrong wire for them to let the magic smoke out. So, great tool. I use it a lot of the time if I'm um, inside the car or working right down the back and I just want you know, to find somewhere that I've got a nice good ground and power ready to go. Um, you, know, you might be testing some lights down the back or something like that. We all know most of the car back there is plastic a lot of the time and you, everything else is painted or rusted and you can't find a good ground. It's nice to just have know that you've got some good reference to work with and it's got nice long leads to be able to do that. Um, lastly, I include this in, in circuit, um, you know, this is accessing a circuit, so this is the paddle probe that you've probably seen me use on a scope and basically it's just an antenna. So we're picking up that, that um, secondary uh, waveform that's coming off of a, an ignition circuit and it's, again, it falls into sort of the current clamp um, doing the least amount of damage, the least amount of work to, to capture the most amount of data. So, I mean, it's definitely hit and miss. Um, you know, there's no, there's no way around it that you're going to have some coils that this will hardly pick up on. You're going to have some that you'll look and go, wow, what a, what a great secondary ignition pattern. Um, it was worth it. But it's just something to think about if, if um, you do do a lot of that sort of work in the ignition system. Okay guys, so that was just a few basic tools. Like I said, I'm not here to go through and find you know, all the gadgets that we've got and that kind of thing. These are really the go-tos that you can do a lot of diagnostic work with um, just some of these basic things really. You don't have to go out and spend a lot. We, you don't need a scope for some, uh, some smaller things that it's just going to confuse the matter. Um, but a lot of the time, the difference between um, effectively and quickly diagnosing something is being able to access that circuit and doing it safely. So um, I'm sure that everyone else has got a, a whole bunch of stuff that they use and things that they recommend. Um, a lot of this stuff, 
as I mentioned, I got from aeswave.com over in the States. There's also um, a lot of good stuff from an Australian diagnostic store, Mount Auto Equipment, so take a look at that. And obviously you would have seen a few of these things going through a lot of the, the catalogues that come through your workshop. So if there's something that you use regularly um, that you know, is similar to this or completely wild, because often they're the best ones where it's, it's got nothing to do with automotive, but you've, you've turned it into a tool, we'd love to hear about them. And if you want to know anything more about a lot of these tools, um, you can go to the TAT website and check out some of the reviews. Thanks, guys.